welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, excited to excited to dive into this so much so I, I made sure to wear my most like vacation vibes outfit today, bringing out the Hawaiian shirt and the linen suit. Uh, only the best for uh, for you all and for for the amazing speakers that we have today. So. What are we talking about? Travel and events. They, let me just pull something up. I'm gonna go through a, a, a bit of um, a little report that we uh, recently published and that we'll share after this. Uh, okay, so, you know, travel and events obviously were a huge part of the influencer space pre-COVID. Um, and I think that, you know, interesting as we, as the world kind of starts to open back up again and we start to have events and we start to travel again, we wanted to talk to uh, a number of experts in the field, um, both on the brand side and, and influencer and hear what, you know, what they're thinking about it. How are they thinking about events and travel um, you know, is there anything that they want to do differently? Are there things that they really miss and they can't wait to do again? I think everybody is anxious to get back to getting on a plane and going someplace beautiful. Um, but is it going to look exactly how it did before? Um, you know, probably not, but I'm excited to, to talk uh, today with Olivia, Randy, um, Sydney and Alex uh, about all of this. And before that, I'll just go through a couple data points and things that we have um, been thinking about as we as we think about this return to travel. So, um, you know, we did um, we did a survey uh, of influencers um, and and also looked at data that we could find uh, in market. And what do people want as they as they think about travel? So, you know, safety is a big part of it obviously with you know vaccine availability expanding um you know i think we'll start to see some of this decrease but you know people want to first know that they are safe um so you know for the hotel properties out there i'm sure y'all are talking about this um but i think that you know 30 percent want on-site testing 29 percent want to know that there's urgent care nearby uh, Probably the most important number is 74% of people want to travel in 2021. Uh, it's, it's definitely something that everyone is looking to get back at. 54% um, rank affordability as a top priority. That's something that we're going to talk about uh, a little bit later as we, as we dive into some of the panelists. Um, so um, this is just looking at what happened last year. So because we have... Uh, because we're pulling in all the posts from influencers on the platform, we can look at different terms and search words that um, people are talking about in their posts. So you can see this is just people mentioning hotels uh, and you can see kind of just how dramatically that fell right when the world went and locked down, which is right about, you know, March 13th up here. Um, and it stayed pretty low all year. And if you look now, you can start to see the numbers are, coming back, people are talking about travel again. Um, but there's also, you know, a lot of COVID police out there. There's a lot of uh, people who are traveling, but they're not sharing it because they don't want to be shamed. Do they know if it's safe or not? Um, again, this is, this is kind of uh, one of the big conundrums that people are facing as these things open back up is our audience is ready to hear about it again. Um, because, you know, so much of what uh, influencers do is, is, you know, they allow their audience to kind of live vicariously through them to inspire them. Are they ready to see that? Are they ready to see people going to events again? Um, the data is showing yes. Um, and again, we have the panelists today, some who have uh, recently run events who can help us kind of understand how that went. Um, as you look at like emotions, what are people looking for? Not really surprising, relaxed, comfortable, and safe is, is what people are looking for. Um, it's been a, you know, no way to beat around the bush. It, it was a, a difficult and shitty year. And uh, while I'm not like generally much of a beach 
guy, I could also definitely go for three days, like sitting in a beach chair somewhere. Um, and my only concern being like, you know, do I get a frozen margarita or do I get it on the rock? So probably no big surprise here, um, but people are looking to chill out a little bit. Um, again, some of what we're gonna talk about today is the shift, um, you know, shift from, uh, this is kind of a lot of how, you know, a lot of hotels are thinking about it, you know, um, from, you know, how do we, when we're, we're covering travel and showing things, you know, things like, like going out, um, being in crowded places, crowded bars, crowded restaurants, that, that for a lot of people is a big reason they travel. That is a trigger for a lot of people now. So how do we show a different side of an experience or of a hotel? Uh, we're also gonna talk a bit um, about um, just the idea of conspicuous consumption and, and flaunting a lifestyle. That was a big part of the influencer space, both with events and with travel. Um, is, that, is it the right time to do that now? You know. Um, do people want to see, uh, you know, influencers going around living these incredibly luxe lives, doing things um, that, you know, are not attainable for most people uh, and not relatable at all? Um, and what the, what the influencers role, again, this is, you know, this has not changed a lot. Um, obviously, they, they're telling us where to go, Instagram um, and social in general, more broadly, is the greatest brand discovery engine in the world right now. Uh, this is the place where people are discovering things, whether that be cities that they hadn't really thought of visiting, hotels, restaurants, experiences, brands, um, absolutely the most powerful brand discovery engine on God's green earth are influencers. And as marketers, you know, a big part of your job is getting, you know, answering the question, like you, you pack up at the end of the day and, and head home. Do more people know about your brand today than did yesterday? You know, and, and that's not the whole job, but that's a, a big part of the job. And, and certainly influencers uh, are, are huge engines for that. And, and I think we all know that we've all, you know, saved, hit save on the Instagram posts of, of those hotels that you want to go to or places that you want to visit or restaurants you want to hit up. Um, so that is, is still a huge, um, a huge part of, of what we need influencers to do, especially around travel and events. The other thing is, is so it's, it's, it's safe, you know, being an influencer, there's obviously like more flexibility, um, in their schedule. Um, they have opportunities to travel and do things that, you know, us normies, uh, don't have. And, I think that like, you know, obviously what influencers are so great at is, is documenting an experience in a way that a normal person just wouldn't, you know, uh, a, uh, again, we'll call them normies again. I self-identify as one, obviously, uh, like us normies, you know, you go on vacation, you're not, you're not covering the, the COVID protocols for your following, right? Because like, you might be happy that those protocols exist, but uh, you're not going to document them and explain them for everybody, but an influencer will, um, and they can build that trust, you know, and they can, they can tell people it's okay. And it's safe. Um, nobody, you know, nobody really wants to be the first to do anything. And, you know, there is, there is a lot of PTSD, uh, after coming out of this year and there's a lot of fear and, you know, you can't just, uh, turn that fear off. Uh, with the flip of a switch. And even if the CDC says it's safe to travel, that doesn't mean people like fully believe that. Um, and I think that something that influencers can do an amazing job of is, is showing that it's safe to do those things again, building that confidence, normalizing travel again, normalizing uh, going to events, normalizing being in crowds, all the things the CDC says uh, we are now safe to do if we're vaccinated. Um, I think it's important for influencers to go out and show that that's possible um, and explain how, you know, uh, what places can you go? What can't you? What's it, 
you know, I hear that Europe is opening up again, but what's that going to be like? Um, are any of the restaurants in Paris open? Uh, you know, those are, those are all real questions. And again, I think questions that influencers uh, largely will be answering by, you know, doing, you know, by traveling, by going to events, by showing that these things are possible and how, and how they're possible. And, and, and the last is to inspire that action, right? To, to get someone to, to say, okay, yep, that looks great. I am, and I'm ready to travel again. Uh, that's kind of inspired me to, to, you know, to, to finally step out from the house and to get out there again um, and, and start ticking those places that are on your bucket list off of it. Um, and I think influencers are going to have a more important role than ever in the next year in getting people comfortable with the idea of traveling again. Um, what's the brand role in all this? Uh, so, you know, this is something I'm, I'm excited to dive into with the panelists more. Um, but if certainly if, if you are, you know, working with an influencer, paying them to do something and there's travel, I think that there are, you know, there are sensitivities and things that need to be considered um, when you're building that relationship. One is planning way ahead. Underst really, I think coming to the relationship with the influencer with a lot more empathy. Uh, we're going to talk to Alex in a bit about uh, the trip that Daily Front Row just did um, and just how to pick partners who are comfortable traveling, making sure that that group um, that you're traveling with are all kind of at the same comfort level. So it's just really important to check in with people, understand where they're at and be empathetic in that. Um, if there are, you know, contractual things that you need people to do, um, really important to, um, to kind of list all of those out. I've been on a number of brand activations and trips, and there's always, you know, there are always things that are really like important to the hotel. I want to show you this experience. I want to do this. You know, we, we want you to get a massage. And a lot of times those things aren't in the contract because they're, they're just part of the itinerary and the contract it involves like, you are going to this place, you're going to give me two posts a day. But while I might be comfortable traveling, I might not be comfortable getting a massage. And I think it's more important than ever now to check in with those partners and, and let them know everything that you are thinking about and see where they're at and the things that you you know, are important for you, make sure that you get those, you know, get those into a contract so that you really have to have that conversation up front and you don't, and you don't put an influencer in a position where they feel like they have to do something that they're not comfortable with um, because they don't want to disappoint you as a client. Uh, having FAQs for their audience, there are going to be people that ask, is this safe? Should you be doing this? Should you really be traveling? Should you be going to this event? Um, and I think it's important to get ahead of those things um, and make sure the influencers are armed with FAQs and answers to those questions um, because you are putting that influencer in the position of, of kind of having to defend um, traveling and you just wanna arm them with language that, that helps them do that and avoid excesses. Um, again, I don't know that this is the time to be flaunting, um, you know, privilege and money and wealth and material things um, to the extent that we were pre-pandemic. We're going to talk about that um, a, a bit later, but, um, but I think there is a way to do it a little more tastefully than we maybe used to do uh, in the past because a lot of people, you know, suffered a lot over the last year and are continuing to suffer. Uh, and I think that we have to, every time we do any post and work with an influencer in a partnership, we have to understand that in the context of the world that we're operating in as well. Um, so that is just a little overview, hopefully helpful. 